this is a brand new Range Rover Sport, and it kind of fits in the middle of Range Rover's lineup. It's above the Evoque and below the Range Rover, so it has to fill that gap. It competes with cars like the BMW X5 and even the Porsche Cayenne, but unlike those cars, this Range Rover has a heritage it has to live up to. It has to be good off-road, and Range Rover says it's excellent on-road. So, coming up next on the Fast Lane Car, we're going to take it off-road, we're going to take it on-road, and we're going to see just how well it does when the going gets fast and when the going gets rough. perspective it looks a little bit like the Evoque and of course it looks a lot like the Range Rover and that's on purpose you want it to have a very strong resemblance to the more expensive Range Rover you also want it to be sporty like the Evoque and I think the car carries it off and does a good job of being in between those two cars and yet having the family DNA of a Range Rover Under the hood, there are two engine choices. Now, this particular model is the supercharged V8, which puts out 510 horsepower. It's a carryover engine. If you want a little bit better fuel economy, you can also get the six cylinder, which is basically derived from the Jaguar F-Type. That engine puts out 340 horsepower. New petrol engine, which mm -hmm. is derived from the one in the Jaguar F-Type, right? Indeed, yeah. yes. Yeah. Uh, supercharged, yep. 340 horsepower. Yes. Very powerful. Yeah, and uh, nice and refined as well. Good soundtrack to it to give a bit of reward. Um, other things, we, uh, new suspension architecture, new electrical architecture, all of those things give us a lot more control of all the chassis components, so it, uh, the car's more agile, um, feels more nimble, makes the car feel smaller, makes the car drive nicer. You hear that? The engine turned off. That's because this newest Range Rover Sport has, yeah, I know I have to push the button, has uh, an eco mode that basically uh, turns off the engine when the car is stopped to save fuel. And that's because it has 510 horsepower and 461 pound feet of torque, which is a lot. And let's see how that drives. Now they say that this car is sporty, so we're gonna kind of flog it around these turns a little bit and see if it is indeed sporty. And the immediate sense I get is that it's pretty buttoned down, but it's a big, heavy car, just over 5,000 pounds. So they've kind of taken 800 pounds out of it by making it much more aluminum, which is great, but it's gone kind of from a double XL to an XL, and you can really feel that flogging it around these corners. A Porsche Cayenne is a little bit more, a little bit more tossable because it feels a little smaller. In fact, you can get seven passengers in this car. There are these secret seats in the back that fold up that are good for two young kids. So it's still a big, wide car, and it feels like a big, wide car. Ooh, speed limit is 25, so we better slow down. Which gives me a chance to talk about the fact that my co-driver here, Gary, is being very kind and putting up with my, my antics as I flog the car around these Northern California roads. So thank you, Gary. Uh, you're welcome. So you're the guy in charge of this brand new 2014 Range Rover Sport. And let me ask the big question, the easy one, what makes it better than the Echoing model? Oh, well, we've, um, obviously it's a brand new car, everything's new, so saved a huge amount of weight by making it out of, out of uh, aluminum. <laughs> and, uh, or aluminum. Yes. Yeah. 
in terms of kind of creature comfort, it has it all. You know, I mean, uh, these are not inexpensive cars. They started about $63,000, and the supercharged one that we're in is $93,000, which is, you know, relatively expensive. This is the kind of car that is an aspirational car for many people. You want to take this to the country club, restaurant, whatever, and, and show it off. And Range Rover knows that, and they've put a lot of time and effort, I think, into the interior. So everything speaks of luxury. There is fine leather everywhere I touch, soft touch materials. A lot of thought and time has gone into kind of the look and feel of the thing. When you get into it, it's kind of like putting on, if you're a guy, a nice designer suit. You feel like uh, you're driving something special. And at $93,000, you better be driving something special. Now, there is a downside to all this power, and that is, well, not, of course, the fact that it accelerates, according to Range Rover, from 0 to 60 in about 5 seconds. And we'll test that in Colorado once we get the car back up there and see if the supercharger actually does propel this big, heavy beast to 60 in 5 seconds. The downside is the MPG, the Combined 16. And that's why you need that start-stop feature, because... Oof, 16 miles to the gallon in 2013 is not grand. Of course, if you can afford this car, I suppose you don't really think a lot about how much money you're paying at the pump, or maybe you do. Uh, in terms of brake feel, it's very linear. Um, it's got Brembo's, check it out. A car of this weight and massive magnitude with Brembo's. And let's gonna give it, you ready? I'm gonna haul it down to stop, you okay? You know, that's good. It's very linear. Um, obviously the ABS activated there. I felt like I was in control. And uh, yeah, they're, they're good. Now you can get all kinds of different options and all kinds of different wheel sizes, including 22s. And uh, we're gonna take this off-road next. Yeah, I mean, you know, you're competing in some pretty hefty uh, real estate, right? I mean, you've got the BMW X5, mm -hmm. which is also new this year. Yep. You've got the Porsche Cayenne. These are these are very well-developed, engineered vehicles oh, yeah. uh, that you're up against. So what makes this better than, say, the new X5? Well, we, we, uh, we've retained our ability off-road, so it's a Land Rover, clearly. It still uh, does everything you'd expect it to off-road. It's even better than the old car off-road. Um, but we've developed the on-road characteristics to be very competitive with those uh, German competitors without, without losing the off-road capability. So you've got this great bandwidth or breadth of capability. It's hard to show how steep something is when you're using a video camera, but this is crazy steep because look, I just took a massive tumble just trying to walk up this hill that the Range Rover had no issues going up or down on. Let me show you. That's the hill below me right there. Let me spin it up. And that's the hill above me. Now I know that doesn't look steep, but trust me, it's steep and I'm dirty. And I'm uh, luckily uninjured, and I'm having fun. So yeah, I'm impressed by this new Range Rover Sport. rectangle there below the wheel that, that's when that wheel is fully drooped or dropped here you gotta show that I can't show it here so I'm driving so you go ahead and show that there you go don't put your hand on the, on the there you go like that thank you very much okay so now now you can see the the suspension at work yep and here's the center differential lock rear differential lock and remembering it's kind of like a clutch pack of five discs So 
that's oh, first gear. Okay, so now it's going to do all the braking for me because this is a pretty yep. steep hill. The hair to the right, just the hair. That's more than the hair. Sorry. The hair back to the left. There we go. Hair is a hair. Yeah, sorry. A very fractional. I have thick hair. <laughs> 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 Nobody was hurt in that moment of drama. <laughs> no ninety-three thousand dollar Range Rover was scratched. So, in case you're worried. The good thing is we got the cameras going, so if we do roll it off this hill, we'll have good video. And that'll be a really good YouTube video, by the way. That'll be more interesting than us crawling along. Uh, we'll see if we're talking about airbags on the way down. That's right. We'll see how they deploy. Now, Range Rover has added an inch of back seat passenger leg room, and the seats do recline. So that's very nice. But if you're a big guy like me, 6'2", it's still pretty shall we say cozy back here there is a new panoramic sunroof which floods the cabin with light giving you a sense of space and openness that is a welcome addition to the Range Rover Sport lineup so like I said I've been fortunate enough to drive every uh, model in the entire lineup off-road and I I'm always amazed at how capable these are but having said that um, and I'm gonna be completely honest there's just nothing that beats having traditional lockers having you know a much higher uh, approach and departure angle having the kind of stuff that's old-school 4x4 versus all this technology now this technology is wonderful it's magical it's amazing what this vehicle will do a 5,000 pound vehicle that's climbing up these hills but at the same time I'm extremely nervous driving this through here because I know that I have a $93,000 vehicle and that if I take a step wrong, I'm going to do some very expensive damage. And that's where I'm a little concerned because obviously people aren't going to do this, but when you do do it, you feel like you're, oh, I don't know, you know, you're like you got this beautiful car that is pristine and chances are if you rub a tree with it or if you rub a rock with it you're doing some serious damage to it and that's where I have a hard time with it I just I just feel like it doesn't belong out here even though it can be out here does that make sense so we've taken the Range Rover on-road and we've taken it off-road and it's extremely capable in both situations but you'd expect that for a car that costs ninety three thousand dollars in this case the question is is it Colorado off-road worthy well I can't answer that till I get to spend a little bit more time with it back at home. And that's when I can also tell you whether it's worth buying, renting, leasing, or forgetting. As always, this is Roman reporting for the Fast Lane Car. Thanks for watching and see you guys next time. all you truck guys and truck gals this is probably the most eagerly anticipated new pickup of 2014 and why is that Nathan 420 pound-feet of torque 420 pound-feet of torque what's under the hood a v6 eco diesel it's three liters and it puts out 240 horsepower Wow now that is crazy a light-duty truck with a diesel engine we're gonna get to test drive it coming up next on the fast lane truck